win the series versus the Seattle Mariners, although they do get blown out in the final game of the series. So the Yankees get good pitching from Garrett Cole and Johnny Brito in games one and two, and Domingo Herman now in back-to-back outings gets absolutely obliterated. And in those games, the Yankees lose in very lopsided fashion, and Isaiah Conner falefa uh, has to be the one to pitch the last inning for the Yankees in both ones. And this one, Conor Falefa doing his best Shohei Otani. Uh, he actually had a one, two, three inning with a strikeout as a pitcher, and he homered in the bottom of the ninth. That, that's a total, total side story. And, you know, this, this team, again, the players that I mentioned last episode, most of them are still not hitting. The one that is breaking out of it, is Anthony Rizzo. And that, out of all of them, that's the mo- that's one that you'd expect the most to break out of it. So Rizzo seems to be showing signs of life. But, man, like, Giancarlo Stanton, Josh Donaldson, and DJ LeMahieu, it, it continues to be a struggle. DJ didn't even play the first two games. They sat him. And the third game, you know, 0 for 4 with two strikeouts, I think was the final line. Josh Donaldson is hearing the boo birds, and, and, I, and I totally get it. I mean, I totally get why. And, you know, there's been some fielding miscues as well, like like we saw in that Red sox Herman game. And then that wasn't an error. Tonight, there was an error. And that really opened the floodgates, even though the Yankees were already losing 6 nothing at the time. But we'll talk about that. And, it, and, like, he is batting. I want to get the actual number. But, I mean, I know, I, I know it's not all about batting average, but it's just crazy how low it is. His batting average is 127. It's just insane. Uh, and then Giancarlo Stanton. He played in two of the three games, and his batting average has dipped completely from where it was. It's just it's so predictable with him that he gets hurt, and then when he gets hurt, he upon coming back, he will be awful for honestly about a, like at least a month. I mean, you know, I, I guess it hasn't been that long since it kind of feels that way now. Hasn't been that long, but the, the the fact is he's batting 190 now. And just the overall numbers, it's not even just the batting average, like 250 on base percentage on the hull and a 660 OPS. So, like, Stanton's doing nothing either. He did play tonight in right field, so good to see him play the field. But, yeah, and there was an injury. Willie Calhoun pulled his quad in the second game. And so he will be on the I.L., I'm thinking probably about three to four weeks. So as Waldo Cabrera, who's been going up and down, he's now back up and he'll play, you know, mostly a bench role. You know, uh, I, I kind of wish as Waldo could stay down there. I want him to get some reps in AAA, but look, like, it is what it is. Injuries happen, and so he comes back up. So Willie Calhoun, who was doing a nice job, you know, I, I kind of grouped him in a somewhat similar category to Jake Bowers and Billy McKinney. And both of them, we'll talk about them, they continue to make major contributions. And Willie Calhoun was doing a nice job himself. I mean, to a lesser degree, I guess I would say. But unfortunately, Calhoun, who, um, you know, his former team was coming to town. Now, granted, the Yankees did play the Texas Rangers earlier in the season uh, at Texas. But Calhoun, you know, was about to face Texas again. But unfortunately, that won't be the case. So, Look, the Yankees win the series, and so that that's important. Uh, uh, you know, coming off of four straight losses, getting swept, um, you know, against the Red Sox. It's, you know, I don't want to let this last game cloud the fact they did win the series, although it's hard. I mean, look, tonight's game was pretty embarrassing. You can't ignore that. So, um, you know, Garrett Cole was, was fantastic, and... It was a little bit of a rough stretch in May, but other than that, look, the overall, num- the overall numbers are very good. He's 8-1 and one with a 2.64 ERA, and, you know, he's very likely to be an all-star, and the Yankees won't have many of them, right? I mean, Judge will be, right, but, like, he probably won't be healthy enough to perf- – I mean, look – the interesting thing is Judge and Cole, and I guess it's kind of on topic because the Yankees are playing Seattle, where the All-Star game will be this year. And I look at the team, and really, it might just be Judge and Cole. And neither of them might even play in the All-Star game, right? Judge is hurt. And with pitchers, it really depends on where Cole lines up. Uh, and that's kind of a crapshoot, right? If Cole uh, pitches, let's say, that Sunday before the All-Star game, he will not be eligible to pitch in that game. So that's 
you know, not a big deal. But the point is that that's just what you're looking at here. And so Garrett Cole has been very important to this team and for the most part has delivered. And, you know, you like the moxie that he showed, uh, you know, we'll talk about that at the end of the seventh. But, um, you know, Yankees were able, it wasn't pretty. The offense, again, the offense didn't do a whole, a whole hell of a lot in the series, but enough. And they hit enough home runs. And that's kind of the Yankee way is it's home run ball. The, the way that the Yankees score runs is by the home run. And, and the thing with that is they're about middle of the pack in slugging percentage, a little above average in slugging percentage. They are bottom five in all of baseball in batting average and on base percentage. So they're really depending on the slug, and it's not as if they're like top five. Sure, they are one of the definitely one of the more prolific home run teams in the league, but that's what they're working with right now. And like I also said, the Bowers and the McKinneys are kind of like the key parts of that, not the name guys. So Yankees jump out to a lead, and it was against George Kirby. I'll say this. Kirby pitched pretty well, but not nearly as well as a start in Seattle. And, and the Yankees also really made Luis Castillo work. So to be fair with the offense in the first two games, they were competitive. I'll say that. And, and Kirby did settle down quite a bit in the first two innings and to only allow three runs. But still, Kirby wasn't quite as in control as the, as the start in Seattle. So the first inning, the Yankees get on the board and they're a little bit lucky. I got to say. Uh, although Rizzo does deserve credit. So first inning, you get a one-out single for Gleyber Torres, and then with two outs, it's an RBI double by Anthony Rizzo. However, Tasker Hernandez probably should have caught this ball. High fly ball to the track, and he it goes off his glove. So it's ruled an RBI double, and Rizzo hit it hard, right? So that's where credit is you know, definitely deserved, but it could have gone differently. So it's one-out the Yanks at that point. Then in the second inning, I should have mentioned this at the top, Harrison Bader returns, and Bader made an impact. And again, with him, it's the defense. It's the energy. It's not so much the offense, even though he can provide some of that, and he gets an opposite field single to start out. He's still second, and then Billy McKinney gets into one. He hits a uh, deep home run. It's his uh, second over of the season, and he continues to be consistent. Billy McKinney should be right in that lineup every day, every day. Uh, he's been that good. And again, it's the consistency. Whereas, again, and I, I feel like I've been tough on Jake Bowers, even though, honestly, he's done a really nice job. A really, really nice job. Uh, and, and has provided a bit of a presence batting leadoff. But McKinney has just been, in all facets, has just been, like I said, just super steady. So that short number gives the Yankees a 3 nothing lead. And they would hold that lead for quite some... I mean, they would... That would that'd be all they needed. But for Cole who really didn't have his A stuff, really picked it up, let's just say, I guess the, the seventh really is when he does, but in the sixth, you get a one-out hit-by-pitch Ty France. Ty France was hit-by-pitch a few times. I, I wonder if he's one of the leaders in baseball. Uh, I've been thinking about it, he might be, the way he's uh, he's got that elbow guard and you know that, that's, that's here nor there. But Jared Kelnick, the former Met prospect, gets an RBI double. Now, this was a play where... Maybe a more seasoned left fielder makes the play. Billy McKinney, um, I wouldn't say it was a bad play, but it was a bit of a mess, right? I mean, it's one thing to allow the hit, but then it kind of jugs off the wall, and then Ty France scores. It's an RBI double by Kalnick, and it makes it 3-1. Let's jump to the top of the seventh. Cole strikes at the side, including a very entertaining one to Caballero to end the inning. Um, Caballero... I think Cole was annoyed by the fact that he was just taking him forever to, you know, get into the batter's box. And, you know, he was, I think he was doing it intentionally. And Cole, I don't know, two pitches, absolutely airmails one. It wasn't like, it wasn't anywhere near his head. He just absolutely just, like I said, airmailed it. And then eventually he struck him out. And he was doing some chatting. I think Scott Service and him were going at it. And it was pretty funny. And Cole came out to start the eighth and he strikes out Dylan Moore. So that was, you know, great to see Cole, who, again, didn't have his best stuff. Then he just ramped it up and ended up with eight strikeouts in seven and third innings. So the Yankees have a 3-1 lead, and then Clay Holmes finishes it out. And I'll say this about Clay Holmes. When he is on, there are not many pitchers better than him. That's the thing. When, so Clay worries me, you know, when he's off, it, it's as if, like, you, you feel a bit hopeless. But, man, when he is locked in, like, he's the best. 
And so we're at a we're at a point right now where you know if Clay Holmes had gotten off to a little bit better start, this is a guy that could have been in the All Star game conversation, and maybe he still will. I, I mean, there's just so many good relievers in baseball. I can't imagine that he'll end up being there, but that's how good he he has been. So good, I guess the last month or so. Just I mean, five up he goes five up five down, and he gets a couple of strikeouts as well, and three ground balls. Just just um. Attacking the zone, soft contact, strikeouts, you name it. Clay Holmes gets the job done, and that's how you draw it up, right? Cole for 22 outs, Holmes for five. And so the Yankees win it 3-1, and we head to game two. Game two, so it's interesting, right? You look at the pitching matchups. Game two did not like what that was looking like. So it ends up being Johnny Brito. So even though Randy Vasquez had done pretty well, they go back to Brito. And man, Brito, this was... You know, I think back to that first start for San Francisco, but this was probably, man, this this is impressive. This might have been Brito's best start as a uh, as a major league pitcher. And against Luis Castillo, the Yankees got him out of the game uh, after five innings. He, 103 pitches in five innings, only three strikeouts, four walks, like really, really locked in good at bats versus Castillo, who's given the Yankees problems in the past. And the Yankees win this game in this matchup. So you felt good about that. And just, you know, the Yankees have had the Mariners number, uh, you know, in the Aaron Boone era, the Yankees really, you know, obviously, you know, you take into account this blowout in the last game, but still the fact is the Yankees win the series and they've been doing a whole hell of a lot of that. Now it's not quite Minnesota twin domination, but you know, not too far off where the Yankees really have uh, done well versus Seattle, especially at home, but on the road as well. And that continued here in terms of winning these first two games. So, this one, like I said, Brito versus Castillo. No Stanton in this lineup. Willie Calhoun would bat third. This was the game where Calhoun got hurt and thus went on the IL. Uh, DJ LeMayu out for a second straight game in this one, and that was kind of pre-planned. And so other than that, everything basically normal as far as the lineup was concerned. So in this one, you know, a couple of scoreless innings for both Castillo and Brito. We jump to the bottom of the third. Lead off walk Anthony Volpe. And so Anthony Volpe... A better series for him. A better series. Um, the strikeouts didn't seem to be as frequent. Baby steps, right? And, and he actually homered in this game. And that's not what I'm even really talking about. It was more so like, you know, I think he, he dunked an opposite field hit in game three. There were some walks drawn. So, okay, like I can work with that. Again, my I'm of the opinion I would like to set him down to AAA. I, I think I'm probably more in the minority than the majority, but that's just what I think. So he walks, and then, you know, he causes havoc on first base, right? Castillo's probably paying attention to him. Full count, Jake Bowers, two-run homer. So Bowers continues to be a great source at the top of the lineup, whether it be drawing a walk, hitting a homer, like he's just, you, you really can't complain a whole lot with what he's given you at the plate, and that makes it 2 nothing Yankees right there. Then... Let's jump to the bottom of the fourth. It's the Billy McKinney show again. McKinney gets into one, just crushes one to right. His third homer of the season, his second in as many games. Gives the Yankees a 3 nothing lead. So again, it's that Bowers-McKinney combination. And, you know, it was a great job by Johnny Brito. He wasn't quite able to get through six. So they go to Jimmy Cordero, who finishes off the inning. He gets a ground out. Then in the seventh, he goes one, two, three. So a nice job by Jimmy Cordero who was brought in to a spot, um, you know, where it was close and he kept it at 3-0 at the time. The Yankees uh, score again, and it's off of Gabe Spire, Mariner reliever. It's Anthony Volpe, his 10th homer of the season. So only Volpe and Corbin Carroll, the only rookies to have at least 10 homers and 15 steals on the season. Now, Corbin Carroll's had an act, I mean, just a crazy, crazy good season. Volpe, not as much, but still. You got to give credit where it's due. The 10 homers, that's something, right? So he's on pace for over 20 home runs. So that is something. But again, I, I want things to be a little bit more spread out. And I, I I would take less homers for a little bit more on base, a little bit more steals. And, you know, I think that's a big part of his game that can be a weapon for the Yankees. So in the eighth, Wandy Peralta comes on. And the struggles for Wandy do continue as he allows a two-out homer to Dylan Moore. So it looked like Wandy was maybe going to come out of there with an easy inning, but he does give a home run to Moore. And so for Wandy, yeah, it's been, you know, a rough go. Um, 
am I concerned about him? Not really. Uh, like he's a guy that I, when it comes to clutch time, I, I like him. But Michael King comes on, and speaking of guys who've been struggling, King comes on, does get the last out of the eighth, but then in the ninth gets into some trouble. Lead off walk Rodriguez, single France, and then got lucky where he hung one at Tasker Hernandez. But he only flies out, and so Canely comes in, and Tommy Canely has been nothing but great since coming back, and he gets the save. Tommy Canely, uh, it's a sack fly by Jared Kelnick, and then he strikes out a. Eugenio Suarez as the tying run. He came in where Kelnick and Suarez were the tying run, and he gets the save. It's Canely's first save as a Yankee since, like, 2018, and I do expect Tommy Canely to be a big piece in the back end of that bullpen. Um, he just looks really locked in. I trust him. I'm sure there's going to be struggles just like anything else, but I think he is someone that should be dependent on more than he has been at this point, and I think we're getting there. All right, game three. Domingo Herman continues, I mean, well, continues to get strong, but it's back-to-back -back outings where he gets absolutely just crushed and only goes three and a third, gives up 10 runs, eight earned, and, you know, look, part of the errors that were happening in that third inning, one of them was his. Vieira is up to 5.1, right? So, and, and I think that, that that is a little misleading, honestly. Like, some of the other stats are impressive, but man, really, really bad. I mean, against Boston, against Seattle, that's a problem. And Domingo Ramon, who's dependent on, this rotation's in a tough spot. Let's think about it for a second. You got Garrett Cole, there's that. And then after that, it gets shaky, right? Luis Severino's been struggling. Domingo Ramon's now really been struggling. Clark Schmidt has been pretty solid. Right? He's been solid, but still, like, you know that, you know, he is more of an at best a back end guy at this stage of his career. He's working on things. And then you've luckily gotten good contributions from the Brito Vasquez combo when they've been called upon. But that's a situation that you can't really trust. And so Nesta Cortez is on the IL. Carlos Rodon is working his way back. And you hope that not only does he come back, but pitches really well. You need that. But this rotation is, is really in shambles with Herman all of a sudden just totally fucking up. So game three, Jake Bowers takes a seat. They go to LeMayu and have him bat lead off. It was a little bit of a different looking lineup. That being the big thing. Stanton was in right field. But, you know, that was what it was. And just inning after inning, her mom was bad. Her mom gives up four runs in the first. You get an RBI single by Teoscar Hernandez, a two-run double by Eugenio Suarez, and former Yankee Mike Ford with a sack fly. So then in the second, a couple of homers, Colton Wong and Ty France. Then the third is when it gets ugly, really, really ugly. So it's a runner on first, one after Mike Ford, and he hits a little squibber to Donaldson. At first he fields it, but then he kind of loses control, and then... I guess it wasn't a big deal. He kind of, you know, stopped. And then all of a sudden, aggressively, it was Suarez going to third. And Donaldson makes a good throw to Herman. Herman can't catch it and tag him. So it goes off his glove and into the Mariner dugout. And so the run scores and four goes all the way to third. Just, you're down six. It was a mess. Optically, total mess. You're down six, nothing at that point. And, you know, Josh Donaldson is the guy right now that is getting booed more than anyone. And, and look, Stanton gets booed a little bit. Um, but Donaldson by far is the most, um, and I, and I understand why I really do. Um, and I don't really think like, I don't see it turning around for Josh Donaldson here. I really don't. How bad will it get? We'll see. I don't think it's going to get a lot better. I really, really don't. Like I, I would not be surprised if there's a world in which he does not finish the season on the roster. They're going to do everything in their power to not do that. Right. We're not close to that. But don't get me wrong. We're not close to that point yet, but. The relationship between the fans and him is not good right now. We've seen where this goes. I don't know. I don't know. It's just not looking good. And so that was a bad job by Herman as well. And, and Domingo Herman as a fielder is not good. Domingo Herman, I've said this before, he's one of the – for the way he looks, he looks like an athletic guy. He's not a good fielder. But it makes it 7 nothing. Then you get a sack by by Caballero to make it 8 nothing. In the fourth, it only gets worse for Herman. A couple more home runs. Teoscar Hernandez homers, his 13th of the year. Then Kyle Raleigh back to back, his 10th. So four homers led by Herman. That's it. He's booed off the mound. And then the Yankees bullpen from there, a combination of Ramirez, Abreu, and Connor Falefa, they go, what, I guess five and two thirds the rest of the way scoreless. Now, again, it was already 10 nothing at that point, but they do that. Brian Wu did a really nice job for the Mariners. Um, really had the Yankees off balance, got a good power fastball. Like, 
Uh, definitely impressed by him. I think he could be a pretty good pitcher uh, for, for the Seattle Mariners. But yeah, um, not a whole lot to talk about until the ninth. And again, give credit to Ramirez and Abreu. I know it was a mop-up situation, but they they you know they they did well. And so in the ninth, it would be uh, Connor Falafa, and he struck out a Eugenio Suarez, which is pretty cool to see. Uh, he pitches a one-two-three inning, and then at the bottom of the ninth, he comes in. Um, you know, to the game as a defensive replacement. He actually came in to play third base initially, and then he moved to the pitcher spot. But um, kind of left with one out. It's a two run homer. What an inning. Looking like Shohei Otani uh, with that one, two, three inning uh, with his first strikeout, then he homers. Uh, and it was kind of a no doubter. Uh, an impressive shot. His fourth homer of the season it makes it 10 2. That was the only positive of this game. Although also Billy McKinney singles. And so McKinney in each game since he's been up has reached base. And I think only one of them he hasn't gotten a hit. So really impressive stuff. McKinney overall batting 318 with a 984 uh, uh, OPS. So now Texas comes to town. And that's going to be difficult. Uh, there is rain in the forecast. I am looking to go to my first game of the season tomorrow night. But that is uh, definitely pending the weather. So we, we shall see. Uh, if that does happen, but for the Yanks, it's going to be Clark Schmidt hoping to continue pitching well. Now that Red Sox start, he kind of you know, ran out of steam that third time through. So they got to be aware of that, right? He does struggle with that third time through the order. Definitely. Uh, most likely Dane Dunning on the mound for Texas uh, has done a nice job. I think he's really mainly filled in for DeGrom. Uh, he was someone who uh, actually re- replaced DeGrom when the Yankees faced Texas earlier in the season. And let's not let's not forget, Texas really beat the Yankees' brains in. This is around the time the judge was also hurt. Judge, you know, where he had just gotten hurt versus the Tigers, and Judge did not play most of this series. Clark Schmidt struggled at Texas, but things are different now. But he did struggle there. He gave up 10 hits in five innings, gave up five runs. So he, he hopes for a better outing this time. Then game two, it'll be John Gray versus Luis Severino. Uh, can't love that matchup on paper, but Seve is due to do better. And to be fair, uh, the last start versus Boston was an improvement. And then game three game three is Garrett Cole for the Yankees. So whenever he's on the mound, you kind of got to win those games. And then likely versus Andrew Heaney, it's going to be versus likely uh, a former Yankee, either Heaney or Evaldi. Uh, and the Yankees continue to face right-handed starters. Like It's been a long time since they faced the lefty. If it's Heaney, that streak will end. But... Um, it's listed as TBD, and they could go Evaldi if they wanted to, who dominated the Yankees in Texas earlier. So they may choose to go there. We'll find out. Either way, with Cole on the mound, you really want to win that game. But this will be a tough series. Texas has a prolific offense. They're leading the AL West. They have a 46-28 record. If the Yankees could somehow win 2 out of 3, that would be awesome. But that is not going to be easy, and it's hard to expect that at this juncture. So... Again, Yankees do get embarrassed uh, tonight in Game 3, but this is, um, you know, still a series win. They take 2 out of 3 from the Seattle Mariners, and they will uh, take on another AL West foe as the Texas Rangers come to Yankee Stadium to complete the home stand.